Well, here's a story with a global impact, including here in the Middle East. China's Xi Jinping has been called a modern day emperor. Since taking power eight years ago, Xi has massively overhauled China's military economy and political influence. And as George Thomas shows us, the Chinese leader is talking global dominance. Napoleon Bonaparte, the French military leader, said more than two centuries ago that China is a sleeping lion. Let her sleep, for when she wakes, she will shake the world. China's President Xi Jinping has emphatically declared that the lion has awakened. Reaching back to the language of his imperial ancestors, Xi announced during his first speech as president in 2012 that his nation would embark on the Great Rejuvenation Project. Tom Miller documents China's rise in the book China's Asian Dream, Empire Building Along the New Silk Road. Miller says since taking the reins, President Xi has been on a trajectory of preparing China to be the world's dominant power. Under Xi Jinping, you know, China has been very, very deliberately um, trying to realize its kind of ambition to become the global superpower. It talks about its centenary goal. So the People's Republic of China was founded in, in 1949. And by 2049, China wants to be the global um, superpower. Chinese scholars say it's also part of the 67-year-old's deep belief that his country has a divine right to rule the world. The mandate of heaven is from China's imperial past, um, where Chinese emperors believed that they not only had the right, but they were compelled by heaven to rule the world. One way is by military force. As commander-in-chief of the world's largest fighting force, Xi has remade China's People's Liberation Army, or PLA, into a military rapidly closing the gap on U.S. firepower. Zach Cooper is a China scholar at the American Enterprise Institute and lecturer at Princeton University. If you look at what they've done in the last three decades, we've seen about double-digit growth in the defense expenditures for most of that time. The results could mean a significant threat to the United States, her allies, and the Asia-Pacific's balance of power. It is likely that China will seek to build a military that is equal to, or in some cases superior to, the U.S. military or the military of any other great power that China perceives as a potential threat. The Pentagon revealing for the first time that China now has the world's largest navy and plans to double its nuclear warhead arsenal in this decade, which includes ballistic missiles that can reach the United States. Gordon Chang warns that China is also adapting its military capabilities to kill Americans. Well, it is a great military threat to the USA because China is developing weapons that are specifically targeting um, American aircraft carriers and others. And while China continues to secure its borders and coastal waters, Xi is also projecting power far from home. The Pentagon reports citing Chinese plans to open U.S.-style military bases from Asia to Africa to South America. We're really seeing an expansion of China's military footprint in a way that uh, certainly wouldn't have been uh, expected maybe 10 years ago. And I think we're just going to see that accelerate. China is also relying on its economy and technological prowess. In 2013, President Xi launched China's Belt and Road Initiative, sometimes referred to as the New Silk Road. Stretching from East Asia to Europe to Africa, China is busy building roads, railways, airports, dams, power grids, ports, bridges, and the list goes on, all in an attempt to gain economic, political, and diplomatic partnerships around the world. You know, it's expanded from about 65 countries originally, all more or less neighbors of China's, to encompass most of the developing world. So there are now more than 140 countries around the world which um, are officially a part of this initiative. Then, two years later, in 2015, the government in Beijing launched Made in China 2025 with the aim of being a technological superpower. It launched initiatives in high-tech industries such as robotics, artificial intelligence, and next-generation technology and telecommunications. China is doing its best not only to, to, to buy up tech from other countries, and we've seen the U.S. pushing back against that very hard um, in recent years, 
but also to kind of create that tech itself. Miller says unlike Chinggis Khan and his Mongol empire, she isn't trying to build an empire in the classic sense. Instead, he argues that China under Xi wants to become an economic, military and technological juggernaut that will surpass the United States and dominate the world for the foreseeable future. When I use the word empire, I'm talking more in terms of an economic and diplomatic empire. China's neighbors watch her rise with mixed feelings. In America, levels of anxiety about China are at historic highs. The Trump administration has put Xi's government on notice for its handling of the coronavirus pandemic, its poor human rights record, trade imbalance, and a host of other thorny issues. Still, as the author of a recent political article wrote, America and the world doesn't get to veto China's rise, only to reckon with it. The question is, what will that reckoning look like in the years to come as China continues to get stronger? George Thomas, CBN News. Alpha,